focus on something what you're good at. Because when you know what you're good at, you work on it, you will excel. When you focus on your weakness, yes, you can build on it, but you will not becoming the expert in that area. So focus on your strength. You are listening to Personal Development Mastery Podcast, helping you take the simple actions to master personal development and create the life you yearn for. I am your host, Agi Keramidas, and my mission is simple, to inspire you to take action towards a purposeful and fulfilling life. In this podcast, I invite myself inside the minds of remarkable entrepreneurs, authors, thought leaders, spiritual teachers, so... If you're ready to find practical insights that you can implement right now, make sure you follow the podcast and get the episodes as soon as they are released. Today, I am delighted to speak with Mei Lam Rocco. Mei, you were born in Hong Kong to a very traditional Chinese family. Despite your traditional upbringing, you went on to become one of the most prominent businesswomen in Taiwan and Hong Kong before the male-dominated Asian society caught up with you and forced you to walk away, losing everything except your son. You recently released your first book, Comfy Dance, where you share your inspiring journey of healing your relationship with yourself and your son and rebuilding your confidence. You are now dedicated to helping others rebuild their confidence and to heal that special relationship with their family and children. May welcome to Personal Development Mastery Podcast. It's uh, such a pleasure Thank to speak you. with you. Thank you, Aggie. Thank you. We will discuss about uh, confidence, rebuilding confidence, and some other uh, elements. Before we go there, let's uh, talk a little bit about that uh, intriguing background uh, you you have. And what I want to uh, ask, really, as to begin with, and I will just give a preface here that most of the people listening to this, and also me included, uh, don't really know much about this traditional male-dominated uh, Asian society that uh, you grew up in. So can you give me one key difference, maybe, between the Chinese and the Western society uh, in this respect, so we can frame... Uh, your story better? That is a very good question, Aggie. Uh, I do brought up, brought up in a very traditional Chinese family. What I mean by that is um, in my family, I got three brothers and I am the number three in the family and I'm the only girl in the family. So uh, I brought up with together with my siblings, we are in a business background. My family is three generation in business. So I grew up with uh, uh, learning how to uh, run a business, how to, uh, what business is all about. But when I talk about a male dominant society, it's been when I was working for my family business, um, one day there was some incident happened that I went to my father and asked my father permission to let me lead the project. But my father firmly told me that, um, no, this is, this, the decision should come from your brother because your brother is the older brother. And I was very shocked because at that time, I know that my brother is not going in the right direction. And as a family member in the family business, I thought I should stood up and told my dad, look, this is not the right way of go, going. Uh, why don't you let me do the work? But I was surprised that my father uh, was not addressing to the, 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 the incident, the project. He is more thinking about because uh, I'm not the oldest. I'm not a son. Therefore, you should listen to your brother. So I think that's the big difference between the mm -hmm. Asian culture versus the mm -hmm. Western culture. And I was very uh, surprised and very shocked at that time because I was I was thinking that I am one of one of the family members, you know. So when I suggested a certain ideas and the the family would 
together together will listen to it. So I think this will resonate with a lot of traditional culture family, mm-hmm. especially uh, Asian, where boy are still the uh, dominant uh, factor in the family. So mm-hmm. this is what I've been uh, saying in my book that I do come from a traditional upbringing family. And that's that's part of the reason. Mm-hmm. Do you want to uh, take us back a little? Obviously, you have uh, your journey has lots of uh, twists and turns. But uh, do you want to share maybe one or two really key defining moments in that uh, journey, so we can understand that uh, those transitions uh, better? Yes, yes. Yeah, I I was originally from Hong Kong. I was born in Hong Kong, but I went to school in England. Uh, studying, uh, graduate in business administration. And I came back to work for my family business. One of the biggest, uh, one of the first turn in my uh, um, journey is when I, one day I was working for my father in his construction business Mm -hmm. in a small country called Brunei. And because the population is only 250,000 at that time, it's a beautiful, you know, country, but it's very small. I was very ambitious that time, and I decided to leave the family business at that point. Um, wanted to go back to Hong Kong, either get a job or do something different. So I went to my father and asked for permission to leave the family business, and my father um, gave me two options. The first one is to stay back and work for him. The second one is go back to Hong Kong to start up another family business, which obviously I took the second option. Mm -hmm. I was gladly to do do it without knowing what to expect. I think that was the the first turning point in my career is to Mm -hmm. left Brunei and went to Hong Kong to start up another branch of the family business. And then um, the second critical moments or journey in my life is um, at one day I just decided to leave the family business. I left my marriage and I, le- I left the multi-million dollars business that I was running at that time. Uh, all because of um, events happens in my life. You know, my father, one of the events was I mentioned earlier about my father decided to let my older brother to take charge of the the business and mm-hmm. saying that would be the right way to go. And I, I love my family very much. So instead of um, constantly arguing and fighting with my brother, I decided to leave the business. So that was when I left the family business. At the same time, my marriage was not doing well. So mm-hmm. I decided to leave the marriage at the same time. So in pretty go, uh, I mean, pretty much in one day, I lost all the business. I lost my marriage. The only thing I have is my son. At that time, he was eight years old. So that is the second critical journey in my life. You said uh, a couple of uh, times you used the word I decided. So you decided mm-hmm. to, to leave the family business. You decided to uh, leave yours your marriage how you know I, I can only imagine that both of them were quite difficult decisions uh, to yes. make life changing decisions was there some element emotional or otherwise mental I don't know what kind of element that made you take that decision because obviously Things like that usually build up over a long time and there reaches a point that something clicks because of a reason. Was there something in, inside, uh, emotional, mental, that really tipped you over the edge and you took those uh, decisions? Yes. Uh, as for the business part of it, because I have always been part of the family business, um, I worked pretty well with my uh, brothers as well as my father was still in the business at that time. And the build up was that I have always been a voice in the business. I My, my decision um, to my family most of the time are, are being heard 
they will listen to what suggestion I give them. And then the time when come to this critical moment of handling a project, which we are actually um, working on an IPO uh, that time in Hong Kong. And I find that is a very important decision. But my father decided that I should be listening to my brother. Mm -hmm. The emotion in me that time is, first of all, is very uh, uh, surprised because I thought I have been part of the family, as always. And I, I have never thought about me as being a girl in the family up to that point. So that is a big, big surprise for me. And I, as I said, I really love my family, my, my parents, my, my brothers. And because my father just made that decision without explaining why, that actually got me very upset and, and, and shocked. So that is the, the emotion that I have when you talk about emotion. I feel like, oh, my God, I am not part of the family. My, my, my decision is not uh, uh, important because I am a woman. And because of that, I decided, like I said, you know, I decided to walk away from the family business. Mm -hmm. It was a very painful uh, moment. And my father still called me every single day after I told him I'm no longer in the business. He's still calling me for a couple of months, I be believe, until one day I told him, look, dad, you know, I'm not in the business anymore. If you want to know anything about the business, please call my brother, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think a big part, now looking back, the shock is because, this is not what I expected. I expected I am part of this family. You know, mm -hmm. I wasn't, ex I, I didn't expect it because I am a girl. My decision uh, that time is not important. In my family, it's more important that you have to respect that the older brother. You know, you, yeah. re you have to respect he is the, he's your brother, he's the oldest. So I think this is one part of it. Let's talk then about after that uh, yes. time and those hard decisions, this uh, journey of you to rebuild your confi confidence starting really from, from scratch, I can only imagine. So do you want to maybe guide us on the, the important steps you took in order to, you know, rebuild your life, your confidence, uh, so we can... Yes. Uh, Learn yeah. from that. I went through a couple of years of depression mm -hmm. because I, uh, when I left the business, I left the marriage. Um, I basically have nothing, nothing that time, uh, except probably a, a, a small amount of money in the bank. But my son, that time, uh, he he went to study in England, so it's very expensive to pay for his tuition and all that. And I went through a couple of years of really dark moments of my life. I used to be a very confident person. And before that, when I was very young, uh, nothing, nothing will stop me. You know, even though things that I don't know, I will go and find uh, the solution. I will learn. But that two years of depression basically is... I have no no courage to do anything. Mm -hmm. I have no desire to do anything. I feel like I am a loser. And that two years was very, very difficult uh, for me. I pretend in front of my friends because I have so many business friends out there. They all wanted to know, hey, what happened to you, May? You know, let's come out and have a coffee, have a lunch and all that. I, I would turn it down by giving up, by giving some kind of excuses. But what really changed is that that time I met my uh, new husband now, mm -hmm. Frank. He is very encouraging me. He has tried very hard for almost a year. Help. Uh, he knows my ability to do things. He knows that I have all. Um, I have the confidence in me. But it's just that I don't see it myself at that time. 
So one day he told me、um, to go and meet one of his friends who are in the headhunting business in Hong Kong, and Mark was looking for somebody to start a business in China. And I have done a lot of startup in my life prior to that, a lot of startup business in different industry. But I still the same thing. I talked to, I told Frank. I say, look, you know, I don't have the knowledge about running a headhunting business. You know,、um, what do I know? You know, I, it's all that negative voice into my head telling me I'm not good enough. I don't deserve it. I'm not worth it. That kind of things. You know, the negative pattern in my head. But the day when I did push myself to go into the office to meet with Mark. And Mark is a friend, so I met him before. So he did. He asked me,、hey, "How are you doing? How are you and Frank doing?" And、uh, tell me a little bit more about your experience in life. You know, so I would start talking about what I did in the past. As I was talking, I can actually hear my own voice bringing me back to all those moments, all those time that I start different businesses. I I actually feel. You know, my heart is pounding, and I'm getting、uh, the heat from my body. You know, it. I I couldn't believe what I was talking. I couldn't believe that I am saying these things that I have done before, and that is amazing feeling for me because that is something that I kind of reassure myself. You, I have the ability of doing all this thing. I have I have it in me. Then what happened to me? So after that interview, I went back and I talked to Frank and told him how I feel. I can actually see my confidence slowly, slowly coming back. Is I think confidence, as we all know, is really a mindset thing. You know how you think things. But before that, that two years is all the negative thoughts occupying my brain was telling me I'm not good enough. I have all this fear in me. I'm scared. I. I Couldn't get myself out of the door. I couldn't step out, you know. But after that uh, and uh, that meeting with Mark, I beginning to feel that confidence is slowly creeping back. But don't get me wrong; I didn't get it right away. But that is the beginning of that. And and then I I tell myself, May, you know, you got to push yourself. You got to get out there. You got to. Keep trying, even though it's it's only one percent a day. It will adds up. So that's how I slowly get myself out of the depression. And because of that meeting, I end up having a、uh, opportunity to work for a Taiwanese lady who is who is looking for someone to start a business in China in Shanghai.、Mm-hmm. And I was scared because I never work for anybody. I only work for my family. I don't even know what it's like to work for a corporation. But I pick up my courage. I told her, "Okay, I'm going to take the job." So I take up that job. I we move. My husband and I moved to Shanghai, and we started that、um, consulting training consulting business in in China. And that is how how all this started. For my journey for recovery, I want to take a short break from this episode and quickly let you know about something I'm sure you will find useful. We are drowning in information, but starving in wisdom. This podcast, for example, has almost 300 episodes, and as you can imagine, there is ample wisdom in them. But who has the time to listen to 300 podcasts? My mission as a knowledge broker is to convert this vastness of knowledge and distill it into wisdom, into implementable insights. So I have created a free special resource for you. I have chosen the top ten podcast episodes that offer the greatest value in three main categories of life. First, the top ten episodes about money. Second, the top ten episodes about health. And third, the top ten episodes on. Mastering your personal development. This free ebook is a curated catalog of those top ten podcast episodes in each category that will offer you the greatest value and in the shortest time. To get it, go to personaldevelopmentmasterypodcast.com/slash/top ten, and you will also find the link in the show notes. 
All right, let's get back to the episode. Something I got from that, and I will repeat it in my own words as uh, an action point, probably to for you know confidence, because sometimes we, especially when we are in less confident periods or darker periods, uh, we tend to forget about our previous successes and previous things that we have achieved and done, and we think that it's gone. It's because we don't feel like that anymore, but. As you were saying, remembering and reiterating all these things that, okay, wait a minute, I have done this in the past. It just helps to bring the the confidence uh, back, especially when you've done something uh, before. Um, I would like to ask you about uh, your book. Tell us about your book, Confidence. And uh, first, tell me, who is it for? Uh It has been for many years that I wanted to leave something to my son. Mm -hmm. And I think there's no better way to leave him is about my life story. A big part I wanted to share with him is that uh, life is not always up, 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 you know. It is ups and downs. My biggest fear for him or even for myself is when you are down, are you able to pick yourself up? I think that is so important. If we're able to pick ourselves up, I think things will go well. If you're not able to pick yourself up, you will stay in the bottom. And that is a very scary uh, feeling. And so because of that, I went through this up and down in my life. And I wanted to share to with him that, look, you know, mm-hmm. even me as your mother, I went through that. I was able to pick myself up. And that was the original thinking about writing this book is to share my life journey with him. Mm-hmm. But in the midst of writing this book, I find my mission too. I really have seen so many um, people who have so m- much capability and quality in them, but they don't necessarily see that themselves or recognizing themselves. And I hope my story will be able to help others to bring that alive, to believe in themselves um, and to go and pursue whatever they wanted to pursue. And then another part of it is my relationship with my son. We Mm -hmm. had a few years very difficult um, relationship we fight, we argue, we cry, you know, it's a very difficult time, especially those are the time that when I went through my own depression as well, I don't know, even know how to work with my son or how to communicate with my son. Mm -hmm. And that part of the journey, uh, then later on, I know that there's nothing more important to me at that time is my relationship with my son. So I went to England where he was studying in England and start rebuilding that relationship with him. So the second half of the book, I talk a lot about my relationship with my teenager son. And I think it is nothing more important for any parents is to mm-hmm. have that special relationship with their children. And no matter how difficult the situation seems to be at, this, at that moment, it can change. And right now I have the 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 best relationship with my son. We talk every single day. We text each other every single day. We encourage each other. And I wanted to share that this is possible for any parents who are going through Mm -hmm. some challenge with their children right now. So the book is of two parts. One is how do you rebuild your confidence through the experience that I have went through? And the second part is how do you reconnect with your son to your children i think that is the second half of the message i wanted to send out both of them very important uh, things for sure and uh, you mentioned that uh, you talk about your journey and you mentioned that what healed your relationship and i've seen the phrase uh, on a few different uh, occasions you use the word love or unconditional love that yes. that was uh, you know the, the major factor so do you want to share some uh, of your thoughts about 
how did that work and its importance yes. in, in healing a relationship with yourself, with yes. your family, with your son, with your uh, uh, mother, I, whatever it yes. might be. Yes. Um, parenting. My, I, some, someone has once told me there's no school for parenting. Every situation is different. And I look at my way of parenting is how do I learn uh, parenting? A lot of time I learn it from my parents. Mm -hmm. So that's how my parents was taught me when I was young. I used the same way that I am, you know, with my son. But there's one thing that I do notice is I have always been a very uh, strong mother. Strong mother doesn't mean that I don't love my son and all that. It's just because I always think I'm right. <laughs> I <I'm> always <laughs> think I have that experience in me. So I better tell you if, you, if I see he's not going in the right way, I will tell him, look, you know, this is not the right way to go. You should, you should try something else because I've been there before. And I think that in some degree, it, it, it might work, but... I think we also have to respect our children, respect that the situation they're in, the environment they're in, because in this generation, it's not the same as my generation or my parents' generation. Mm -hmm. I remember one time Al has, uh, I did ask him after our relationship, you know, getting much better. And he asked me, he said, mom, I, I, I asked him why you were so difficult at that time, you know, and he looked at me, he said, Mom, you have no idea. You are judgmental. I'm never good enough for you. You know, whatever I do, you, ha you have to criticize me. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked because I don't think the parents will be thinking in that terms. All we're thinking is we, we just want the best for our son. We went through that. That's why I'm telling you that you should be doing different things. So what I learned about unconditional love what that really mean is like when your children is not doing things that you want them to do, it, does that mean that they are not worthy of your love? You know, I believe that as parents, we have to, as, as our kids grow older and older, you know, what they're looking for is your love and your respect. Mm. And for me, that is the wake-up call for me. So when I respect my son, in a way, what I mean by respecting, meaning if he's going through doing certain things, you know, let him go through it. Let him go through that, that process. Let him go through that experience in his life. And then for me is to be there to support him, to guide him. And to build that relationship, you have to build a trust first. If he trusted you, more likely that you will be able to have a meaningful conversation with your children. Mm -hmm. When you have that meaningful conversation, you can guide him. You can tell your experience to him, and he's more willing to listen. So when you, when you bring that communication back on the table, then everything else will be better. So that is really the first step. How do you build back that communication, build that trust back with your children? And it's all started with unconditional love, meaning that even though they're not doing the things that you want them to do or you don't think that is the right way to go, let them try and support them and ask them questions and, and they will be more likely to come to you and ask for advice. Because our kids have a lot of, I'm sure they all have a lot of fear in them when they try to do something new or do something different. They always wanted to have someone to support them, to hear them out, you know, to hear their, their fear. And there's no better way is to come to the parents instead of going to their friends. Mm -hmm. So building the communication is so important. And I think there's no right time or right moment to start. And you have to start now. Thank you. And what you were saying, uh, you know, sometimes we we think we know what's best for the other person <laughs> because of our own experiences and so on. But uh, many times 
it's the other person that has to experience whatever yes. it is. And in this case, you're talking about uh, the parents and uh, their uh, children. And it's important what you said to, uh, regardless, to support. And if if they take, let's say, the the decision that w- you wouldn't take, but they need to take it, you know, to learn from it, and then they end up on the floor. That's part of our uh, support to help them, as you said earlier, pick yourself up when you're down, and uh, you know when you have someone a parent or uh, to help you with uh, in this particular case to uh, get up. Yeah. That's yeah. even more important because you will also have learned from your own experience and not by, you know, your mom's experience or uh, it is, uh, you know, very uh, different. Um, yes. May, uh, can you give to the listener based, you know, on the conversation we've had today uh, so far, can you give them something actionable, something that they can yes. implement uh, right now or tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, I would like to talk about starting to rebuild your confidence first. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I would do is to have that Mm. self-love, self-care of yourself. It is very important for your well-being, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Because a lot of time... Uh, we don't take care of ourselves. We always do things that what other people want. And we very seldom to look inside of ourselves and ask ourselves, what, what, what do I want? You know, what do I care? Um, I think that part is so important because that build on your self-worth, build, mm. build on your uh, resilience, build on your self-esteem. That is the beginning of motivating yourself so love yourself first what i mean by love yourself is like go deep and look at yourself what you're good at what what are the things that you have done in the past what are the success that you have made no matter how small how big it doesn't matter go back and look at it but not look not looking at the past what i've done wrong and all that stuff but really pat yourself on the back and say hey i have done that you know, I, 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 I have succeeded, you know, I have done this before. And, and also treat yourself well. Not always do things for other people first. Take care of yourself first. And I think that is the most critical part for doing that, number one. And number two of that is set goals, but achievable goals, something that you can achieve. Not, not you know, We may have a big dream. We may have a big goal in front of us. But it's good to have that big goal, but you make small steps. The reason why having achievable goal is also another thing to motivate you to go forward. And confidence is like building a muscle. You know, you have to work. You know, the first, the first maybe a few times uh, it's difficult. But as long as you push yourself out there and start building that muscle. So setting goals, small goals, meaning... Every time you achieve something small, it's, it's make you happy. It's also assuring you that you can do it. So setting goals, setting achievable goals, that's number two I would advise people. Number three is to identify that negative thoughts, patterns you have, especially when people lack of confidence. There's a lot of noise in their head or telling them whatever they want to do, the next thing they say, oh, I'm not, I'm not good enough. Like for myself, I wanted to find a job. I would say, who would want to hire me? I've never worked for other people. i only able to work in a certain industry, but something different, I, I don't have the experience. All these negative thoughts in our head. Try to change that into a positive statement because the word that we use is so important. And I often, when I'm not uh, feeling particularly positive, I have this negative thought in me. I would stand in front of a mirror. I talk to myself. I say, mate, get it out, get that out of the way. Acknowledge that it's there. Don't, don't, don't sort of think that they're not there. They're there. But 
tell yourself that hey, I can I can do better. I'm better than that. I have that experience. I have that experience. So recognizing that negative thoughts and replace it with something positive, in the long run, it will help. And then the fourth thing I was saying is,、um, I would say learn from mistakes, but I, I I don't like to use the word mistakes, you know,、mm-hmm. because it, it's a negative. Part of it,、yeah. there's something that things that doesn't、uh, have the、um, result that you want. Learn from it, and because there's a lot of opportunity for us to learn and grow from the experience that we we have. So whatever experience come you have right now, it 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 might not be what you are looking for, but look at it on the other way. Is what have I learned from this experience? And then this other thing again is building up your confidence, building up your、mm. self worth. And the last one, but not least, I would think is recognizing your strength. And a lot of people will always focus on what I'm not good at, but focus on something what you're good at, because when you know what you're good at, you work on it. You will excel. You'll become excellent. When you focus on your weakness, yes, you can you can build on it, but you will not becoming、um, the expert in that area. So focus on your strength. So these are some of the tips that I would advise people when they are、uh, wanted to build their confidence or stepping out of their、mm. whatever they are having right now, struggle they have, and slowly build on it. Uh, May, uh, where will you direct the listener that wants to connect with you and find out more about you? I'm on Linktree、um, on May Lam Rocco. It's my name,、mm-hmm. and I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Facebook. So currently, I'm working on a、um, online course to talk about how to rebuild your confidence. Hopefully, in a short period of time, I'll be able to have that course online. That's great. Thank you. I'll, I'll have the links、uh, in the show notes. And、uh, May, I will ask you two quick fire questions, which、uh, I always、uh, ask as、uh, wrapping this、uh, fascinating conversation up. And my first question is: What does personal development mean to you? Personal development means to me everything, because、um, if we don't grow, we'll、mm-hmm. die. It's like tree. Tree don't grow, they die. So,、mm-hmm. it, no matter how old we are, how young we are, you know, we have to grow. We have to learn. So, learning is very important. Doesn't mean that you have to be a rocket science or something, but learning something that you are you, you want to learn. That nowadays there's so much information out there, and and I just find that I don't have enough time to learn the things <laughs> that I want to learn. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I can relate to yes, that. Yes, yes. And、uh, tell me, May,、uh, hypothetically, if you could go back in time and meet your eighteen-year-old self, what's、mm-hmm. one piece of advice you would give her? If I can go back to my eighteen years old,、um, I think what I would I would do is I wanted to、um, learn more about、um, having more self-awareness of myself. Mm-hmm. And I mean, at 18 years old, I'm pretty much a pretty confident person. So on the confident part, I think I am okay, you know. But I think what I'm lacking is understanding myself、mm-hmm. more. And what do I really want? Because I just go with the flow because it's a family, it's a family business, it's a traditional family, and I thought that is the way that my life should go. You know, without really asking myself, what do I really want? Without understand where is my strength, why I'm behaving a certain way. So I think that self awareness, if I can start at a very young age, that really will help me a lot going forward. May I want to thank you very much for、uh, our conversation、uh, today, and I want to wish you all the very best with your mission and your book, of course. Do you have any closing thoughts on what we discussed? Thank, first of all, thank you for having me. This is a, a really wonderful conversation. If there's one thing that I want to leave to the listener, I wanted to say 
confident is a journey. So you learn as you grow. You know, every step of the way, um, if you're currently struggling with confidence, you know you have it inside of you. You just need to take it out and have the courage to step out, even though it is fearful, even though it is scared. Because the the minute you step out, you'll be surprised what you can see and what you can learn. So I would encourage the audience to do that. Thank you for listening, and I hope you got valuable insights from today's episode. For your free ebook with the top 10 podcast episodes that offer the greatest value in three main categories of life, go to personaldevelopmentmasterypodcast.com mastery slash top 10. Until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 